Hey guys, it's Rob, and thanks for tuning in. Um, I just thought I had to use that opening because I use it all the time on my video blog. Um, I am super duper excited to be casting a uh, actual pro player. I'm casting a 1v1 here on uh, probably my favorite 1v1 match. Uh, map, and actually probably my favorite 1v1 match. Uh, this is on Metalopolis, and we have in the bottom corner here someone with Korean letters. I don't know. Uh, no, that is TSL Curious. Uh, don't know too much about where Curious is, kind of on the ladder. Um, I know he lives in the same house as Jalizerg, and I also know that he's on the same team as Puma, who of course just won the uh, NASL recently. And up Swanning up at the 12 o'clock top corner, we have, of course, my favorite player. That is Liquid Huck. Favorite because he is, of course, Protoss, like I'm Protoss. He is Canadian, and he is just an all-around amazing player to watch, especially his force field play if you've watched him, uh, the DreamHack final. Just a brilliant. Um, they're actually just having a chat here, you know, doing the standard GLHF, and also just talking about... Um, a ceremony. I believe that a couple, a member or two of the Team Liquid family kind of left recently. Not too sure why exactly, and they had a little ceremony for them. So that's them just talking about that. Uh... As I was mentioning before, Huck is uh, kind of, I would say, an up-and-comer kind of player here. He's been... Uh, I guess known for a while, but recently just both winning DreamHack and also winning, uh, oh, what's it called now? I completely forget what it's called. He is definitely uh, one to watch and has become my favorite player just in the last few months. One of the things that I really like about Huck here, and we're probably going to see a little bit of this here, it's his harass with his probe in his early game. He has just ridiculous. Ridiculous APM. I mean, look, look at his APM average. It's 275. And his opponent here has an APM average of 100. So just ridiculous APM. And you can see here, you know, he's dropping his gateway pretty standard. And we get to see right away just some of the harass that Huck likes to do. Uh, we're getting our spawning pool down at the uh, 13 mark, which is uh, a little bit late, but not, you know, particularly unstandard for Zerg players in 1v1. So right away we're seeing some of that harass that Huck's like to do. One of my favorite things that Huck does, and I don't know if we're going to see th this match or not, but he actually kind of mines minerals just briefly and forces drones to move to another mineral patch. Again, when you have that ball or s you know, almost 300 APM, you can kind of do that. Another thing that Huck likes to do, and I think many Protoss players do this, is they'd like to have their probe just kind of move around and be annoying right at the Zerg player's uh, natural, since for Zerg, getting that natural quickly is super important. Often they'll drop a pylon and maybe cancel it just before. Or they'll do something like that just to be kind of annoying. Up here, Huck is uh, probing up <laughs> pretty good. I always sound so bad, probing up. I don't know, it sounds sort of dirty or something. And probably we'll go three gate century. That seems to be pretty standard opening against Zerg and also a pretty standard opening for Huck if you have watched him play. And may I say, you're in for a treat if you have not watched him play. Uh, I'm hoping to be doing more of these uh, pro games now. Um, I think I'm comfortable enough casting, and certainly it's way better uh, watching them than watching me. <laughs> I just love the way the probe kind of is pulsating like crazy here. Uh, another thing that Huck does that a lot of players uh, know and watch out for is he loves to put proxy pylons in a lot of just random kind of places. Um, for example, I've seen him play where he puts a proxy pylon right up here and can just you know warp units right in. So we see that here. There's a lot of checking of proxy pylons and where players also may be spawning. Though I believe Curious probably knows where Huck is just based on how long it took him to get to his base. We're seeing uh, the cyber core go down, pretty standard for Protoss. Uh, dual gas. Uh, Huck will often go for dual gas um, before that cyber is finished. Uh, mostly because he loves those centuries, and as you can see right here, he has already got a century coming out. And that's probably why uh, he's got that dual gas going there. Let's get the production tab open so you can actually see what these players are playing. See, I, I've looked at this before, and that zealot looks like he's floating. I uh, could be wrong, but maybe that zealot's got like... He doesn't have like zealot legs. He has like, I don't know rocket legs or something like that, some sort of new, and uh, just as I said, we have the three gate coming out already, and I will expect the uh, Huck to be expand expanding pretty quick. Um, you can see metabolic boost going for the uh, Zerg player, also pretty standard for Zerg to get out those metabolic boosts, those Zerglings go so fast with them, and they can easily get by the defenses, especially of... Uh, 
a Protoss player. Um, another thing that a lot of players like to do is put the pylons down below there. That allows them to warp in units, also kind of semi-block off the uh, entrance. Uh, <coughs> Metalopolis is a pretty nice map for expanding too. There's uh, kind of third there on the side, two here. You have the gold in the middle, and then the same thing on the other side. You can see here, here's that Zergling again that I was talking about. He's checking for random proxy pylons on H for Huck, because Huck puts them in places that you wouldn't necessarily expect and can actually kind of pincer an army that you may think you have uh, things saved up and you don't. And here we go, Huck's saving his gateway, and as I said, the uh, three-gate centuries band is exactly what Huck is going for. Um, we can see a Roach Wart dropping here for Curious. Also pretty standard play for uh, for the Zergs. Now he's getting Hallucination. I must admit that I do not see a lot of Hallucination used by most Protoss players, both those who are crappy like me and also those of the uh, professional ranks. So we'll maybe see some Hallucinated. Often when I do see Hallucination, there are Hallucination in the form of Phoenixes or... Mostly phoenixes because they can be used for scouting here. We have a little bit of a harass there with these uh, lings. Probably nothing too big. Huck's going to go out and see what he can do with them. That Those should fall quite quickly and he'll lose some uh, some early lings. And in a game like this, every ling counts. I really think I should make a song. Every ling counts. It's kind of like... Or maybe take... <laughs> sorry if, I, if you let me digress for a second here as uh, Huck is moving out with some sentries. Maybe take every sperm is sacred and make it every ling is sacred or something like that. Or every drone is sacred. Here is, Huck here is going to go and uh, take out those lings and uh, quickly grab at least his side of the watchtower. So we have some uh, more harass here by this ling. It actually manages to snipe a probe too. So if we look at the units lost tab, we see that Huck has now lost the probe and I'm sure... He is shaking in his boots. Roaches are on the way here for um, Curious. He's got his queens uh, infesting like crazy. And we have a few lings out. And pretty standard play so far. Lots of lots of uh, roaches. And one of the biggest things I think that most people who aren't professional players, and I include myself in it, don't take enough time to do is that's map control too. I mean, you can see... People are, go are pros like to go around and get map control. Here we go. Here's the Hallucinated Phoenixes scouting. Kind of what I would expect with what you would use for uh, Phoenixes 4. I mean, particularly since uh, they can kind of uh, be a nuisance. Oh, here we go. The links are moving in here. They've actually got around the kind of wall in the has, And we're going to be able to snipe maybe a drone or two. And let's see if they can make it out without actually losing any links. Wow, every ling is definitely sacred for Curious because he managed to escape with not one ling lost. Only managed, only managed to pick off one probe. So if we look at the unit supply count, uh, there we go. Huck has a slight advantage here. Okay, every pr apparently every Zergling wasn't sacred because we just lost a couple there. And those protest players are going to go home and celebrate their victory with whatever kind of alcoholic beverages Protoss drink. So we can see that Huck has a he's just slightly behind on the drone count. Oh, okay, here we go again. More stories to tell to their uh, Protoss children for future generations. Slightly behind, not overly. I expect that would probably pick up. Here's another hallucination going down. I kind of expect Huck would want to keep his energy saved up for force fields, but I guess when you have full centuries, it doesn't really matter that much. We have an evolution chamber going down here, and there's your gas going down for uh, Curious. More Ling Harass, uh, keeping at the third there. Uh, it, it seems like this game is settling in for uh, a long, long match since uh, very little early pressure has been put on. Merely a few uh, sacred zerglings running around like chickens with their heads cut off.